Hey guys, here. So I've talked through franchise stuff, gameplay stuff, and my ideas for that, and, and thoughts on that for 20. Let's get into Mutt 20, as we're starting to get, to get more information over the coming weeks as we lead into it. Uh, we're getting the Mutt reveal ratings on the 22nd, according to EA's website. So look out for those, but uh, I would expect over the coming weeks to get a lot more information. So I want to put out a video showing what I expect for like the perfect Mutt, what to look out for next year, and kind of some ideas going forward. Um, so... Let's get into it. Mutt 20. I want to see more custom art, like what they did with the Antonio Brown and Odell Beckham Jr. cards this past year's for movers. That stuff, where they put it on the card and it was actually like done by an artist. Like, can you imagine, say, like the Halloween promo comes out and they paid like an artist to create some sort of um, Magic the Gathering, Wizard of the Coast style artwork for that? Like, where it's actually like thematic. Like, can you imagine a Khalil Mack, like, I don't know, painted or however they want to do it? Whatever their artist specializes in. Like, how cool would custom art for different programs be? Um, so, it actually, like, because, you know, it's not just the player and the card on the, uh, on the field and the stats that matter to us. It's also, like, you know, looking at our lineup, roster baiting, as we as they call it in the league. Um, it, it, it's also important to us. So, I think that would add a lot of, of kind of depth. Uh, and along that same line, um, you could do card art. Um, like old football cards, like we see in MLB The Show. Like if you do a flashback or a legend card to a certain year, I contract with, I don't know, Tops or whatever it is, Fleer or something, whoever has the your, your contract, I don't know if you can use them or negotiate with them, and actually put that card in the game. That would be a, a lot more depth to it, in my opinion. Um, maybe an, like a build your own golden tickets for power-ups. So like it, you could take an, uh, a, like a selection of different pictures. Like you know how to level up, like Williams has so many different pictures on him as you go up and level do that and then offer like different backgrounds so like on your own power up you can put your own background with your own guy on it and it's kind of like your card to, to add a little bit more customization to your team um, maybe along that same line you could add something like Pokemon has and I don't know maybe people will hate this but shiny cards I've mentioned in the past so like cards that come in packs and they do have this with like the platinum cards uh, but like because they're really rare pulls for basically the same overall so kind of like that but make the platinum more like I don't know, the art cooler, uh, I don't know, just, just instead of just putting a number, which, I mean, we care about numbers, this is mutt, it's based around the economy, but have a little bit, like, you know, fancier outside wrapping, as aesthetics do matter so much to us in this uh, world of ours, I guess is the best way of putting it. Um, I want to see another thing, I, I still don't know why trait and weight aren't on cards, so that'll be interesting to see if they actually fix that for next year. Why do we have to go to Mudhead? Why do we have to go to third party to figure out your your your, your game? and how these guys will actually really perform. And why isn't weight on these cards either? So that needs to be fixed for next year. Um, I need stat tracking on these cards. It's been too long. We, we've suggested this five years ago. Stats need to track. Make it like MLB The Show does. But instead of them, have a filter for online versus offline stats. And not just the stats on the card. You know, the amount of yards I've gained, the amount of interceptions these players per game, tackles, that kind of stuff, etc. Um, all the stats that we get in the NFL... I also want economy-wide stats for MUD itself. Why don't you share with us, like, you know, take a look at Eve Online's uh, Economist report and, and what they put out. Something similar. I want to see the sinks and faucets for, like, how the money supply is doing versus the card supply. I want to hear about the velocity of coins. You know, how many times a coin has changed hands over the, a certain time period and how that changes month to month with the game. Like, I, I don't know if they're afraid to share with the community a lot of this information and because we've seen... A lot of like, why don't we know, why can't they put out a report saying, here are the most called plays by like the top 100 players, the top weekly players, top salary cap players. Why don't they put out a thing showing off the meta? Hearthstone does this with like, all right, here, you fill it in with the meta decks and people seem to really like that. Uh, so like, why don't they share more with us? That's what I want. Some more transparency there. So a lot of that, um, I, I want to see like also with the economic stuff, a basket of goods for golds, low elites, mid high, kind of like what I do in my market Mondays, uh, training amount used, you know, the amount of training and totals out there, coin, uh, uh, total amount of coins out there in the economy. That's just interesting stuff, and I think as players, it'd be kind of cool to hear this about your your uh, economy to kind of share that uh, reports with us. I don't know, I don't know how many people would care to hear it, but I think there is a, a pretty good demand. And I think it'd be nice to see in the game. So that one. I, I highly doubt any of that's going to happen because it doesn't seem like EA likes to share a lot of stuff because we don't even know what a lot of thresholds are until we test. Um, so I really hope that kind of goes through and they kind of shift their whole thinking on being transparent with the you know people that play the game. So I think um, events. I'm going to do a, a video on events specific, but like innovative events are needed and Jake did talk about that. So I'm kind of hyped to see that. So make sure and look out for events for next year, like college overtime rules. He said it's going to be one. So 
that's going to be kind of neat. Um, next, the power down costs, those need to go. Why would you force us to pay monies to power, pay money coins to power down cards? Seems silly. I know it's a coin sink, but it's such a small coin sink. You need to take that out of the game. Don't punish your players for trying to trade in and make their ultimate team and customize it. Please stop. Don't do that. Especially near the end of the year where people were liquidating to buy coins for Rogue Mirrors. It was just disgusting. Um, the uh, power-up passes need to be highlighted in the game too in those power-up situation. The auction house tax, I believe, needs to go on at 5%. Frequently, cards are not brought to heal are not deflated due to the auction house tax although it definitely helps don't get me wrong that's a huge coin sink probably the biggest in the game um the auction house tax the c new cards entering the game the supply of the new cards generally drive down the prices of the old cards more than any type of auction house tax so down to five percent like a lot of the other sports games have would be pretty nice uh, i know only the show has 10 but i believe believe i could be wrong but nhl fifa has five but let me know if i'm wrong on that i haven't played those games uh, I just I just saw it on the internet, so I don't know how reliable that is. Um, gambling sets those need to refresh. You guys put out these things early in the game, and then you never refresh them throughout the years. The wheel of the wheel of packs, wheel of coins, wheel of training. Those need to be balanced, and those need to be refreshed. Those need maybe un unlimited amount of doing that. That's something I want to see next year, because because that's kind of cool. I want packs and packs again, right? Remember back what what fifteen? We if you open up a pack like an all pro pack, and then boom, a pro pack was inside the all pro pack. So yes, please more of that. Um, I want the, um, I think this is a little lower on my list, but I want the percentage for limited time pulls out there. I want to, I want to know what the chances of pulling a limited time pack is. Like you did a good job this year starting out. So make sure and show us that for next year. That is something we really need to look out for. And as a community, we should demand to see our odds on our pack pulls, um, more. Um, I think gold tokens should go for a quick, quick sell, right? It's an easy way of, uh, of getting them out there, just refreshing them, getting coins. Like right now, you can you could trade them in for cards through the year for, as new uh, sets came out. You know, those uh, flashback heavyweight veteran sets as those come out. Uh, you could do that. But I want a way of converting them quickly into coins, right? Maybe it's not the most efficient with a gamble, but it should be fun. And that's what that's what this game is about, fun. So gold token for a uh, coin quick sell is pretty nice. More Legends is obviously a thing I, I, I want every year. I know it's tough to get them, but I, I do need you to really commit to that. So let's see how many more. Because the community's complained about a lot of Legends this year. And it's weird because I saw some uh, EA stands be like, oh, it's hard to get Legends. There's so many more Legends than there used to be. It's like five more or ten more Legends than previous years. It's like, stop. Stop defending EA. There are so many players that played this game. Why is every single Pro Bowl for the last 30 years not in your game, right? You have half a billion dollars a year. I know like half of that has to go to your executive pay, uh, but you still have $200 million a year that you can put into this game. I mean, add a few more million dollars, please, uh, to the legend budget and bring in some new guys and, and bring in a lot of guys. Um, not necessarily like the legends legends, but also mid-level legends because the best part about theme teams is having choice. Like the best part of a mod is choice. The best part of theme teams is those boosts and, and playing with players that you loved. So having the choice, like say you're a Giants fan to choose between Saquon Barkley's running back, Brandon Jacobs, Ahmad Bradshaw, uh, going all the way back. Like having the choice through the years for the position that you want on your, on your theme team. How cool would that be? Dallas Cowboys. Would you want Aikman or Romo? Would you want, uh, like, as a Steelers fan, I can list off so many positions. Who would I want to start at my linebacker spots? Lambert, Green, Lloyd. Who is it? So I want more of that choice for theme teams. So that's how many legends I want in this game. Um, no, and don't necessarily make them overpower than current day players. That's a big problem I see in MLB The Show. And a little bit in this game, legends are oftentimes the best cards. Do not make the legends the best cards in Mutt 20. Make them balanced with current day players. You did a good job near the end of the Team of the Week promo to make those master set players as good as Legends coming out. So that was really cool. Um, and I hope they continue with that kind of master set into 20 to balance out the live and the current day versus the Legends. Um, I need the card art. In 20, we need to see the card art actually pop up in our lineups. Why didn't the card art load? Why was it frequently it just stayed as a black screen? You need to fix your servers to deliver that card art, right? The disconnect in, in gameplay, and I didn't say I, was, I didn't want to get into gameplay here. That's embarrassing enough. But your cards just not loading in a menu. Your menu's freezing. Terrible. That needs to be fixed for twenty. So if if they've paid attention to the community at all, that's something that they need to have fixed. Um, I want the, I think the chems and abilities. When you power up a card, if you bought it on a lower card, like if you bought it on a card and you set to power up that card, chems and ability. If you add that card in, it should just be on that power up. Get the technology. I don't care. Fix it. More platinum packs. The platinum packs were some of the best part of the promos, right? Where we had that Blitz promo. 
there should be more of that right there should be a better way of you injecting coins or allowing us to gamble or get packs with coins in it for money stubs are being sold by mlb the show why aren't you selling coins the promos need to be innovative i don't want to see promos being cut and paste anymore it just feels like they found a, they found a way of doing the promo that's the least offensive way and we don't complain as much and they've just stuck with it and it's been two years change it up more of that mystery box stuff at this like you did the start of 17 that was fun um we need position flexibility why haven't safeties just been safeties why are cornerbacks cornerbacks, but like not a slot cornerback? Why is there no slot? Like you have, don't get me wrong, you have added slot wide receiver Kem, which is which is a good step. But like, I like the ability for edge rushers to be edge rushers. I don't want a, a, an artificial distinction between defensive ends and outside linebackers because they essentially play the same thing in the four three versus the three four on the outside versus the defensive end. So. Please, uh, edge rushers versus interior defenders. Same with linebackers, with coverage linebackers, stuff like that. Um, and being able to kind of move players. And if they, if there is a penalty when you move a player in position, let us know what it is. And maybe the show is able to show us how many stats a player loses. So we need to look out for that for next year to see if, if Mutt 20 is listening to the, the community. Because we, we need to know the stats in our cards if they're playing out of position. We need to know how much play rack, how much awareness, what they lose. And obviously knowing what those things do is also really nice. Um, packs. So... A lot of people have been asking for walkouts and stuff. MLB got walkouts this year. I don't necessarily need, no, think we need walkouts because uh, every other sports game has it. Maybe highlights of the player. This is something I've been mentioning for about four years. Highlights of the player. As, like, say you pull a Sean Taylor, then him blasting that punter in the Pro Bowl comes out. And you're like, oh my God, I, I pulled. Who is that? Who's that highlight? What kind of play did he make? Night Train Lane, giving somebody the Night Train necktie. Something like that. You're like, oh my God, that was badass as hell. And then you got the card and you can play with him. That's how I think they should do their walkouts. Is is just I don't know if they can I don't know if they can license NFL films. It would make sense that they would because it's literally the, the league that they partner with. But you know, art art is a hard thing to license, so that might be tough. But they they should do something like that. Um, FIFA has those like sets that go out for a day or a week or a certain limited amount of time. I think that's not a bad idea. You know, obviously you don't have to call them the same thing FIFA calls them. Call them your own mutt sets. You've been doing sets for a long time, but limited time sets. You do have a little bit during like blitz time. You do have some limited time sets out there. But oftentimes, your sets stay for the whole year. So I wouldn't mind a, a daily, something pops up randomly in a day. Hey, do the set, and you get this 90 overall card. Oh, cool. Do the set, you get some coins. I don't know if SBCs are fun for people or not, but seems like a nice idea and something that's easy to steal from your FIFA stuff. Even though I've oftentimes criticized you for only taking your ideas from FIFA. Still not a bad one. I don't think that one's a bad one at all. More sets, more things to do is always good. Over 100 stats. Some way of, of extending the lifetime of the game to not make every card the same. Jake did confirm on Twitter... That's something that they have done. So definitely, um, we will look out for that. We will judge that tweet ne this time next year to see if the offseason was as powerful or as uh, engaging as they said it was going to be. Because uh, I hope so. I don't know what their solution is for that's going to be, but I really do hope it comes and hope it uh, is there for us. Um, I think grinding yards. Like If they haven't changed up the Mutt Master for next year, if we see the Mutt Masters on the same thing, what I have to do is you sit in a rookie solo for 10 hours and grind passing yards, rushing yards... There's nothing ma masterful about that. There's no Mutt Master there. The fact that they do put that in the game, it was disgusting. A few years in a row now. Uh, they need to change that. We need to be uh, we need to be on their ass if Mutt Master is on the exact same way next year. Uh, because that sucked. You want to have your game and the things that you do in the game to, to, to reach these goals be the fun way of doing them. You don't want to force people into you playing your game the worst way possible, right? You don't want to ha force somebody into sitting at like like saying a, a MMO into the first level slaying those those boars level one boars for thirty hours in order to grind most efficiently. You want the most efficient grind to be actually playing your game and having fun. So make head to head levels count as much as solos. Make make it not make the yardage just not be a thing next year for Muttmaster. Master. I would rather have uh, the the million of other ways of you doing the Muttmaster. Master like you used to do in the past with sets and stuff like that and head to head. Uh, wins, which you do technically still do have. Uh, well, sort of, half and half. Um, you know, daily content and, and promo drops, we really need to be on their ass. They, they need to show us that they have been able to commit to it because the last two years have been kind of, eh, and, uh, so after the Super Bowl, right? Before the Super Bowl, they've been fine, but we need, we need consistent content. Um, budget cards need to make a comeback. Uh, like guys need to excel in certain areas. Obviously, you don't want all the guys playing alike. So if somebody's with seventy 
overall and 70 across the board you don't want to play in the same as 90 but you want at least a few 70s that maybe have i don't know 88 block shed so at the beginning of the game oh 88 block shed is perfectly usable as my defensive tackle he's going to have like 40 pass rush so but he will be able to sit in the middle of the field and be able to shed a block maybe get a tackle and that's his one job so we can get specialists to do one job maybe he's only 40 speed so he can't do anything but sit there be a blob and shed blocks but he has a role in your team and I think specialization cards and budget beasts are good for your game. It allows for um, team building without having to have like the best overall team. You can you can kind of make up the, for the deficiencies with your own game plan. Maybe you get a bunch of catching traffic receivers and just throw a West Coast system. You won't run very fast, but they will catch a traffic. Or all speed, which I know a lot of people are going to do. Uh, but different ways of like all run blocking O-line, all pass blocking O-line um, to, to kind of like fit your one game style at a cheap way. So... I also think something to look out for that we need to know, and they did commit a little bit to this, more blogs to describe what each rating does in detail with their associated thresholds. So they talked about they're going to have more blogs, but they haven't really described their game. For, for them trying to push esports so much, they really haven't revealed a lot about how their game works. It's taking the community banding together, testing and sharing that knowledge with each other to kind of decide, hey, this is, this is sort of how the game works, right? This threshold at 91 zone, this threshold 90 zone, route running 90, that kind of stuff, spec catch 95. For, for the community to find this out and not EA to tell us, it's kind of weird, kind of strange. I, wish, I really wish EA would kind of like sit down and do that, put that blog out for us. Um, I think Madden needs to go free to play. Uh, this is kind of like a higher thing than anybody at like the dev level can do. Madden needs to go free to play the Monday after the AFC and NFC Championship game. I think what, what we saw with NBA, and I know they went down to $3, but if, if Madden goes and says, all right, go ahead, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Madden's free now. At the most hyped time of the year, because those two weeks... It, to my, to what I've seen for data, uh, are the highest population of the Madden community. So expanding that, you know, everybody got the, all the people that bought it for Christmas and allowing people for those like two weeks and then after the Super Bowl when the kind of population dies off, exp- like allowing that many people to get into the game and, and get that dedicated because I can't imagine a whole lot of sales happen after the Super Bowls of uh, uh, Super Bowl of Madden because that's when they make it free on EEXs. But move it up right before your big game. Um, to kind of let people uh, get into it and obviously have enough servers ready to serve those people. Um, so I think top three should also change. I really hope they've they've solved or found a way either to let us set our own top three or to show our whole teams off at the beginning of the game because it's been kind of random and sometimes it's like, oh, that guard's made my top three. I want a, kind of my new purchase, my new shiny object to kind of flex in my opponent for my top three. So that's kind of a minor thing. But a lot of, a lot of these are minor things that I want to look out for for next year for kind of like things that they've improved um, upon in our lives. Um, and then last thing, obviously I can't ask for a create a stadium as that's not really anything huge or that that is a big thing. Like my big idea is for everybody to start off as like 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 a, a middle school football field with like just a couple bleachers. And then as you earn coins, uh, earn le- sorry, as you earn levels, you, you can build on and customize your own stadium up until like, you know, the big cathedrals we have now. Um, for, so when you're like max level, uh, you, you have your own stadium, your own customized uh, thing to play in. And then, like, the way EA monetizes this through cosmetics, basically being able to, like, put up your own, I don't know, air conditioning units. Um, or and then every single Super Bowl you win or top 10 weekend league finish, you can put a banner uh, in your in your stadium. So basically create a stadium. But that's not what I'm asking for. Is That's really labor-intensive for EA. I'm asking for vintage stadiums. Can we see the old uh, Metro Dome? Can we see uh, old, old Three Rivers? Stuff like that where, like, it's just you know, kind of the history of the game. Can you get, can you get a license with those old op, the people who ever own the rights um, and put them in the game? Because that's pretty neat to play in old ballparks and it'll be the show. So maybe Madden adds that. Uh, that's the kind of things I want to look for to make uh, almost my perfect mutt. Let me know what you guys think. What kind of additions for mutt only do you want next year? And uh, am I on it? Or are you guys kind of like, eh, whatever. I just want to, you know, grind solos and get through it and, you know, get my team up. So let me know what you guys think. Good ideas, bad ideas. I want to hear them all. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching Call to Action. See you tomorrow.